Hi everyone. Today we are going to study from class 9th chapter 5 introduction to Euclid's geometry. Who is this Euclid? So let's know. Euclid, he lived around 300 BC. He is also known as Euclid of Alexandria in Egypt. He was a Greek mathematician and he is also referred as the father of geometry. So that much is enough to know about Euclid. Now he has given us some axioms and postulates. So let's try to understand what is axioms and what is postulate. Now axioms meaning it is applicable every part of mathematics. So whichever field if you take 1 plus 1 will be equal to 2. Whether you take in geometry or you take in polynomial or it is in trigonometry or it is in algebra. Whichever field of maths you take 1 plus 1 is true only. So that is the meaning of axiom. Axiom meaning is axioms are applicable for every part of mathematics. In any field of maths axioms are accepted. Now, postulates means it is applicable only on geometry. So only on geometry these postulates are applicable. So now in detail let's study about axioms and postulates. There are seven axioms are given in your textbook and five postulates are there in your textbook. So let's see one by one. First we'll study about axioms. So the first axiom that we are going to study is Things which are equal to the same thing are equal to one another. Example, if A is equal to B and C also is equal to B, then A will be equal to C. So you see, A is also is equal to B, C also is equal to B. That means A and C are equal. That's why they are equal to the same thing. So things which are equal to the same thing are equal to one another. Now next we will see second axiom. If equals are added to equals, the wholes are equal. So in example, we will try to understand. 2 is equal to 2. Okay. So if 2 is equal to 2, then we add that. If equals are added to equals. So here I add now. So already these are, these are equals. 2 is equal to 2. Now I am adding both the sides. 1. Both the side I am adding 1. So then the total will be what? Total will be here also 3 and here also will be 3. So that is the meaning. If equals are added to equals, so equals are now equals are added to the equal. This is already equals. So now equal, this is equal. So plus 1 we are adding here also, here also. Then what happened? The wholes are equal. Whole meaning the total also will be equal. So that means if we know that A is equal to B, then we add both the sides C. Both the side we are adding C. So that means what the answer that we get here will be equal to the answer that we get here. So this is the best example you can understand. So if the equals are there 2 is equal to 2 then both the side we are adding the same thing. So the whole will be equal. The answer that we get also will be equal. Now let's see the third axiom. Third one is if equals are subtracted from equals the remainder are equals. Same way. So if you consider that is 3 is equal to 3. Okay. So these are the equals. So if equals are subtracted from equals. These are the equals. So I am subtracting both the side with 1. Both the side I am subtracting. Then remainder what I will get. Here also 2 I will get. Here also I will get 2. So if equals are subtracted from equals. The remainder are equals. Now let's see the fourth axiom. A fourth one is things which are which coincide with one another are equal to one another. Now things which coincide. So now for example we take a line. Okay. This is P and this is Q. So there is a line PQ we have. There is one more line QP. So that comes from 
this side QP. So this is one line PQ, another line QP. Both are coinciding. So that means PQ is equal to line QP. If you take another example, we when we have an angle that is A B C. So we have the angle angle A B C. So we have this angle A B C. Also we have the angle C B A. Angle C B A. So both are coinciding. These angles are A B C and C B A. So coinciding. So things which coincide with one another are equal to one another. So that means angle A B C is equal to angle C B A. Now let's see the fifth axiom. So the fifth axiom is the whole is greater than the part. So if you consider we have a big rectangle here. Big rectangle here and this rectangle name is A. So this rectangle name is A. So this is a whole. Okay. So there is one more small rectangle we have here. This rectangle is B. So now which is greater here? The rectangle A is greater. Or B is greater. So naturally A. So the whole is greater than the part. So the whole uh, rectangle is A. And the one part of this rectangle is B. So that means rectangle A will be greater than B. So the whole is greater than the part. So now the sixth uh, axiom will say. Things which are double of the same things are equal to one another. For example, if... We have x. So double of x is equal to y. And then double of x is equal to z. So that means y is equal to z. Because double of x also is equal to y. Double of x is equal to z also. So that means y and z are equal. So now the seventh one. Things which are halves of the same things are equal to one another. So if you consider half of x is equal to a and half of x is equal to b, then a is equal to b. So that's all about axioms. Let's move towards now postulates. So postulates are applicable only for geometry. So okay, uh, remember that. Axioms are applicable for any part or any field of mathematics. But postulates are applicable only for geometry. Now here see the first postulate is a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point. A straight line may be drawn from any one point to any another point. So if you have uh, any one point here, another point here, you can draw a straight line. If you have a point here, if you have another point there, you can draw a straight line. So a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point. So the second postulate is a terminated line can be produced indefinitely. A terminated line. Terminated line means a line is there. So this is a terminated line. Okay. So terminated line A, B, B have. So now this terminated line can be produced indefinitely. So it can be uh, produced this side indefinitely and this also can be produced this side also indefinitely. So a terminated line can be produced indefinitely. So now the third postulate. A circle can be drawn with any center and any radius. A circle can be drawn with any center and any radius. So if you have a point, so a circle can be drawn with any center. So if you have center anywhere, you have a center, any center, you can draw a circle with any radius. So you can take either 2 cm and draw one circle. Take, if, uh, take this is as a center then you can take in your compass 2 cm uh, radius then you can draw a circle so if or else you also can uh, take any center and then take maybe radius 5 
so if you have take one center and then you take radius 5 cm then you can draw a circle so a circle can be drawn with any center so if you have your one line your one center you can take this as a center and take any radius of either 5 cm or 1 cm or 10 cm of any radius then you can draw a circle so that's the meaning a circle can be drawn with any center any radius anywhere you can take the center with any radius you can draw the circle so now the fourth one all right angles are equal to one another so you take if this is a right angle so this will be 90 degree so if you take this direction this is a right angle this also will be 90 degree or you take or this direction so if this you consider as right angle okay okay so this has a right angle hmm? then 90 degree so whichever way you take all right angles are equal to one another whether this di direction 90 degree or this direction 90 degree or this direction 90 degree whichever direction you take but 90 degree all right angle this is a right angle this is also right angle this is also right angle so all the right angles are equal to one another now let's see the last postulate the fifth postulate that is if a straight line falling on two on two straight lines makes the interior angles on the same side of it taken together less than two right angles then the two straight lines if produced indefinitely meet on that side on which the sum of angle is less than two right angles i'm sure you have not understood anything so let's see it slowly if a straight line falling on two straight lines okay so there are two straight lines are there so we have here this is one straight line and then we have another straight line it's also a straight line this is also a straight line so the, we have a two straight lines okay so we have a two straight line a straight line falling on two straight lines so there is one line falling on to this two line so you consider this as a ab this as a cd so there are two straight line so there is one more straight line is falling on to this two, two straight line so it is falling on to the two straight line so you consider this as pq so there are two straight line a b and c d on that pq line is falling and when it falls it forms interior angles okay so it forms interior angles here this side one interior angle and the other side one interior angles okay so we have two pairs of interior angles you have studied in your smaller class sum of interior angles are equal to 180 degree so that means this angle this angle together it should be 180 this is 1 plus 2 should be 180 and 3 plus 4 should be 180 so sum of interior angles are 180 we have studied but here this postulate says if there are two straight lines are there and one straight line is falling on to that then the sum of two angle will be less than 180 which side somewhere one side it will be less than 180 either this side or this side there should be one side it will be less than 180 but then how we will know which side it will be one less than 180 the side where if we are producing the line indefinitely that side where it is meet it will meet okay you see uh, same side of it taken together less than two right angles then the two straight lines if produced indefinitely so if they are produced indefinitely meet on that side on which the sum of angle is less than two right angle so if you are producing indefinitely if definitely then this will meet somewhere this side if you produce this will it meet if you are producing this will it meet somewhere no so that means this is not the side so which side it will be less than 180 the side where it is if you are producing this line it will sure to meet somewhere so where it will be 
on that side on which the sum of angle is less than two right angle that side it will meet so this side angle 1 plus angle 2 will be less than 180 degree so if a straight line falling on two straight lines makes the interior angles on the same side of it taken together less than two right angles then the two right straight lines it produce indefinitely meet on that side on which the sum of angle is less than two right angles so which side it will be the same side the same side where the two line if we are producing indefinitely where it meets that side the angle will be sum of the interior angle will be less than 180 or you can say it will be less than two right angle two right angle right angle is 90 degree right so two right angle means 90 90 180 so less than two right angles so which side on the side where the two line if we are indefinitely producing it this will meet on that side the sum of interior angle be less than two right angles or less than 180 degree i hope this is clear to you that's it thank you and god bless you